Hi everyone, welcome to the Hi I'm Ian channel, featuring sick Ian, because Ian is not feeling too well this week. Uh, so, the power rank gigs, sorry they're late, um, I had a lot of personal business, um, I had to, um, I ended up going on a surprise trip that I only got informed of, like, the day before, so I didn't really have... I was, and I kind of worked on the power rankings while I was down there, but then never had a good time to do it. And then, like, the second I got back home, I got, uh, I got really sick. You can probably hear it in my voice. I'm, I've slept for most of the day, but I'm up now, and I'm able to get this done, hopefully. Did I press start recording? Please tell me I did. I did. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are getting sick of my stupid Samsung tablet formatting video, but it's really all I got, and I don't really have the money or the t or like really the time to like find another way to record or find like something else to do it on. I I'm <sighs> it's. It hasn't been fun, but hey, it works and it gets videos out there. So, you're gonna have to live, I guess. So, anyway, let's get into the number 16, which is the Real Magikarp. And Arf got 6 out again. Uh, poor Arf. He just. It, it just didn't seem like. It felt like he was really just struggling to get any form of momentum in this match. Like, um, he got Thunderous set up, I th think, really, really early. Um, but it got mitigated by L5's double Scarfers, um, Magnazone, and Latios. I mean, I'm pretty sure Latios was scarfed because Thunderous is naturally faster unless Arf did some some poor thing with his speed creeping, but I'm pretty sure it was scarfed Latios because it went for Ice Beam and it just immediately switched out. But it it just felt like Arf just kind of struggled for... kind of struggled for any way to get a foothold in this match. L5's Persian came in, parting shotted, taunted his um, utility mons and Gligar and Umbreon and basically shut them down. Um, Magnusode and Latios, like I said, just revenge killed. And then in the end, uh, um, Arf really just had nothing. Victini got walled by Tox Effects, and once Zygarde got set up on by pretty much... L5 was basically able to set up on everything. <laughs> um, he set up on the Gligar um, to get his sub up. The sub protect Zygarde just basically ran through, ran through the entirety of Arf's team. Um, Mega Altaria went down really early. Thunderous went down early. He just didn't have anything for the Zygarde, and L5 was just kind of able to run train on his team. So, again, another unfortunate performance for Arf. He's he's not doing too hot this season. I hope things work out for him. It's just, so far, not doing too well. Oh, and he didn't bring Ferrothorn this week, but... L5 had a Magnazone, so... Yeah. Yeah, uh, he couldn't really afford to bring Ferrothorn. So... Yeah. Ugh, I'm sick. <laughs> so anyway, we got number 15 at the Los Angeles Lookers. Um, he... Jarrett... Um, you see a team preview... Jarrett had, like, nothing to break Milotic. Like, just from team preview, I can tell that he just had nothing to break Milotic. Now, 
that's fine going into the game you could say oh you just need to chip down Milotic or like you'll find out a game plan or if you just play well and pressure it offensively well enough but Will like I'm not gonna say it felt like Will was in control the entire match because it did end up going back and forth but Jarrett but there was a point in the match where um Jarrett did get a crit on Wills for Alligator through light screen that basically allowed for Alligator to get revenge killed. And though um, Jarrett did make an aggressive play off of Wills, I guess over prediction that could have allowed him to get much more, uh, that could have allowed him to get a much more higher deferential win. But, uh,. Irregardless, I I think Jarrett just in this match did not have anything to stop Milotic. I don't think he brought Taunt um, Tornadus, so if he had that, he might have been able to win in the late game. It's just, it felt like he didn't prep well for Milotic. And in that, uh, in that sense, it just didn't. It just kind of stopped him from from winning. Milotic just kind of sat there and walled all of Jarrett's team. Like, I know this victory ended up being a 1-0, but that was just because I think Will played the end game very carefully after For Alligator went down and just made sure to get Milotic in safely because he knew it could win. Also, um, I'm surprised he let his clef get toxic. Like... Everything on his team would have ended up getting toxic. I'm just surprised like he didn't at least try to scout for the toxic. Because, you know, that's something Milotic, like will always end up carrying. And he had already revealed to be unaware because he took rocks damage. Uh, I'm not saying that's like a misplay or anything. I'm just wondering if there might have been a better course of action for that. <coughs> <coughs> So, yeah, we'll move on to our final 0-3 team. It's number 14. It's the APB, a blue potato, a.k.a. a cringe potato, and his Washington Claw Itzards. And this wasn't a poorly played game on APB's part. It was just, uh... It was just... Uh, Ace, I think, pl played and prepped very well, and... You know, you look at APB's team, and he himself said, uh, I said, why did you draft Gigalith? And he said, because I needed a flying resist. I see that now, because he did bring Gigalith to this match, and Banded Crobat put a dent in his team that Ace just kind of drove through. Like, okay, my tablet's slow. I'll, I'll plug it in. Don't worry. Uh... Yeah, it's he had absolutely nothing to switch in. It's just Crobat came in, something was taking fifty percent or more, or just dropping and uh, that sort of that sort of set allowed Ace to to just get so much momentum and everything. Why are you yelling at me, cat? Leave me alone. Uh, he had a per- Um, uh, Tapu Koko wasn't really allowed to do anything because Ace had two very good switch-ins and Excadrill and, uh, and Decidueye. Granted, um, uh, APB did play well. Um, not knowing that he wouldn't risk the Banded Bat speed tie, he decided to go for Nature's Madness when he switched right in on his, with his Tapu Koko. And that allowed him to get 50% off on the Excadrill. And the Excadrill was also a big threat to his team. Um, his best switch in was Vullaby, which got two a KO on the switch, which makes me wonder what kind of Vullaby spread it is. I've used Vullaby, and I know that thing gets fatter than that. I'm just curious, like, is Vullaby really that ass? I don't think it is. I'd, I've used that thing before. It's, it's walled. It's walled up things before. I'm just curious. Just curious is all. But... Yeah, physical cure was cool. Um, allowed him to get a big dent on 
Um, Ace is Manaphy, then I'll talk about more when we get to Ace, but, yeah, unfortunately, it's just, A APB just really did not have much for Ace's team this week. Um, I have him at number 14, because I think out of all the 0-3 teams, I think he has the best chance to bounce back, because I don't think he's been playing badly this season, I just think he's kind of beginning, like... I just think he's kind of. I just think he's kind of been having a bad start, but I think he can. Uh, but I believe in his team, and I think he can. I think he can bounce back. I still do believe that he can do it. I st and I be I believe all the O and three teams have a shot to do it. I just think APB has the best shot out of them. So anyway, number thirteen, the Jacksonville Jellicents. Um, Alex got a win. With what I thought was the, with what I thought was one of the weakest teams in uh, in the initial draft, and Alex has been playing like really well. He's been shocking me actually, and I do want to acknowledge that even though he's number thirteen, that's just because I believe the other people in front of him have, um, have either gotten consistently like have been playing consistently well themselves or I wouldn't feel right dropping them below him and uh, and this match had an ending that um which that I am very like like I, I'm not gonna lie I am kind of surprised Alex ended up winning this match because I'll talk about the ending a little more when we get over to his opponent, Rise Pool. But, um, Alex still ended up playing very well. He had very solid prep with the HP Flying Cobalion to catch in, um, to catch the Buzzwool upon switch in. Like, once Jellicent went down, Cobalion was such a threat to Rise Pool's team. And Alex knew that. He brought the double grass to deal with Jellicent so that Cobalion could win late game. Um, Ampros got off some got off some damage early in the game. Um, mitigated the usage of Rise Pools. Heatran. I'm not sure how I feel about like Tangrowth not going for Earthquake when he was in against the Heatran, because he could have knocked it out and potentially saved his Tangrowth for later. But you know, hindsight. Uh, um, sa uh, the sub Buzzwool did stop Salamence from doing anything super serious. Like, I think Rise Pool just had very good prep for the Salamence. But I think, uh, I think Alex did play this game really well. Like, um, a lot of his mods didn't really feel like they did too much, but at the same time, just constantly pressuring Rise Pool. To the point where it was a, uh, to the point where it was Co Cobalion versus, um, Cartana and Cobalion ended up outspeeding Cartana and knocking it out. So, yeah, good victory for Alex. I I hope he keeps getting more. I want to move you up, Alex. You've been proving me wrong. You've been proving me that you at least know how to use this team. After the 6-0 in the beginning of the season, I think you've been stepping up your game. Go get them. Anyway, um, move on to our number 12, the Arizona's like Cardinals, coached by Dougal. I tried not to move Dougal down too much this week because I think he had a god-awful matchup. Like, I think Dougal's matchup was actually awful. <laughs> He, um, Inverse said it himself. Like, he didn't really feel threatened by anything. The biggest threat to his team was Galvantula. And he even had, um, Kiram, which was, I think, very specially defensive. It, it didn't even get to a KO'd by Life Orb Bug Buzz. And that was, I think, the biggest threat to do, to Inverse's team. Because if you look at his map, if you look at the team, Galvantula could have actually run through him. And, yeah, um, this was just inverse had, had, um, um, uh, I guess I'll talk about the matchup, like, in its entirety, because I have inverse at number 11, 
But, uh, yeah, you see from both sides of the spectrum, like, Inverse just kind of had a switch in or a play for everything Dougal could have thrown at him. Galvantula, he had um, Kiram in the back to mitigate that threat. Once Galvantula went down, he really didn't have anything to, like, put huge pressure on Inverse's team. Um, low Punny, Celebi, Celebi ate those hits for breakfast. Um, Roserade, he had a, uh, he had, <clears throat> he had, uh, things that could take hits like Gliscor, Scizor, and whatever hidden power he didn't have. If he had hidden power fire, Gliscor could eat two hits, and if he had hidden power ice, then Scizor walled it for literal days. Um, Zygarde, again, Celebi. <laughs> Volcanion, you see that tiny little ass fish hiding behind Curum? Yeah, that thing walled Vol Volcanion. It's actually amazing. Like, Max Spadefa solved best wishy washy. Just, just completely made Volcanion useless. And um, Scarberry, because of lead matchup, was mitigated to just, get it to just getting up rocks and then dying. And. It's, it's just, Dougal just kind of got, a uh, just kind of got rolled over. And considering we're getting into the FAs parts of this, uh, of the season where FAs are going to be coming into play, and I'll be doing a video on that, um, I think that should be going up either tomorrow or the day after, and then I'll do power rankings for week four soon after that, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see how the rest of the season will play out with FAs in effect and see if they help out Dougal's team so that he doesn't get rolled over like this. I don't think his team is bad. I just think that uh, it needs a little bit of patchwork. And it because Inverse really just kind of poked... just kind of poked th right through Dougal's team. And if Inverse keeps playing like this, uh, you know... He's going to go far. So we're going to move on to our number 10 and our number 9. Like, I, I think in order to try to speed up the process a little bit, because I know my power ranking videos do tend to be a bit on the longer side. Longer than they need to be. Um, if I have two people, like, back-to-back -back that uh, that had the same match, I could just I'll just do them both at the same time. Like, uh, I have Genius at number 10, and I have Ice at number 9. Now, you'll notice I didn't change either of their positions. Despite the fact that Ice won. And that's because, not only do I think the teams in front of him have been doing consistently better, but, um, this match, um, despite the fact that, um, Ice ended up winning 2-0, um, it lo Ice won because do because Genius had to leave, and at that point in the match, it was still very close, and Ice had lost his. And Ice had lost his biggest offensive threat to Genius's team, which, in my opinion, was the Alola Nine Tails. Like, G like Genius did not have a switch into that after Torkoal got weakened in the early game. Like, Tur Torkoal was, like, his only switch in, and that got... <coughs> and after taking a big hit early, even that got to a KO'd by Blizzard into Dark Pulse of the switch in. Like, Genius, at one point in the match, made a, made a prediction, um, trying to switch out and catch, uh... And catch him on the double, because he expect Because he had... Because he had, um... A little of Nine Tails, and he thought he was gonna double predicting Torkoal to come in, but he didn't have to, because a little of Nine Tails just basically needed the Blizzard into Dark Pulse, and that thing was dead. Um, it was a, I think this was a very close matchup. Raikou put in work early. Mian Shao applied a lot of offensive pressure, especially with the Scarfed Hidden Power Ice. Um. Crocodile defensively checked Lando. Uh, Victory Bell offensively got a kill. 
before ice came in and blew that thing back. It was a slug. It was a slug fest of a match. Like if I wasn't honestly sure what's gonna win. It's just hard to move either of them up or down because this match really came down to, well, they lost because one of the competitors literally had to leave. They did not have time, and this was apparently the only time they could play. So, they they were wondering if they like. They could have potentially recreated the matchup, but it was 35 turns in, and Genius did, just did not have time, and he wanted to, and he needed to leave, so I understand. It's just very unfortunate that he has to take a loss because he actually ran out of time. Not like a timer win or anything, he just legitimately did not have time to play through the rest of the game because he had to leave. So yeah, on both sides, this was a very good matchup. I, I honestly could not tell you who I think was going to win in the end. It just would have came down to, I think, who either made a play or who slipped up. And, you know, you can't count for that. Like, you don't automatically know who's going to win in that sort of circumstance. I can't make that judgment call, so I'm not going to move either of them up or down. Now, before we get into my number eight... um. I just want to start this off right now that the bu that the top eight teams were very hard to rank because I think they are very close in skill. They are very close in record. They are very close in how well they have been playing their matches. It's It's been hard for me to rank these teams. These rankings are very shaky and like they can change at any instance. The top eight teams have been... Have haven't been affected too much by the events that have happened this week, but I do want to know that there are little changes that I myself am not sure of. And going forward, I have no i I have no idea where people are gonna rank because this week had a lot of ups, downs, shockers. Uh. So yeah. We'll move on to number eight, the Anaheim Altarius, coached by Ace. Now, but he, but Ian, he won. Why is he getting moved down? I'll explain in a second. It's not because he played a bad game. I'm just going to say that right now. I think Ace played a very solid game. Comfy never even needed to hit the field. Excadrill checked what it, checked what it needed to check. Got up rocks. Um, Crobat. Crobat destroyed APB's team to the point where Manaphy came in and clicked Dazzling Gleam and finished the match because it was a scarfed Manaphy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have been I've been playing draft a long time, and from what I can tell, that was apparently an ass set. Like I've seen people use that in the past to get just get trashed for because that's not how Manaphy is supposed to be used, but. You know, if it works, it works. It it checked it check in this matchup. It checks Keldio. It checks Tapu Koko. Uh, soft check. Like I I think you need like I I'm not sure how much damage you need to get on Tapu Koko in order for like a scarfed water move to knock it out. Um, it checks Kiram if it's at a low enough range. Which with rocks up, it got weakened very quickly. Um, Gothitel. Trapping Keldeo, which was one of the things that could live a hit from Manaphy after Rocks. It's... I think Ace had a game plan, which was just use Crobat to its fullest potential, and then come in with either, uh... With either Manaphy or potentially Decidueye to... Just finish up the rest of his team, because I think at that point he didn't really have too much to... You know, stop Decidu stop Decidueye or Comfy either. Like I think Comfy at that point could have won the game too, because I think all he had left was Chairman Tapu Koko at a very low percentage. So uh, we'll move on to number seven, <laughs> and the Oakland Rosa Raiders, coached by King L Five. Uh, just give me a logo, man. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I I'm running out of pictures. So. Um, the reason why L5 got over Ace this week is, um, well, L5 got his second 6-0 of the season. You don't get two 6-0s, even though they are against very low-ranking teams on the list. 
Uh, you don't get two six O's and not get at least somewhat praised for it. Like, there's no, there's no way I wasn't gonna not move him up. The only reason he's not higher is because I feel like the it's it's really just because I, I I didn't feel right moving the top six teams down to move L five up. It's uh, this was this was a very hard week to rank, and you know it was against Arth who Arf who has been consistently not doing very well in this season. There's a fucking spider on the floor. Ah, uh, he's gone. So, but uh, yeah, it did not seem like L five really struggled too much in this matchup. It seemed like he had a game plan for everything. Mega Altaria came in on his Mega Pinsir. And he just set up stealth rocks so that thing's faced. He was not scared. By the way, stealth rock, mega pincer. Whatever works. Whatever works. You didn't have another stealth rocker. I'm sure Arf just thought you were bringing stealth rocks. And then again, when Arf, I believe, has a ditto, I don't think you want to really... Uh, I don't really think you want to bring Sword Stance Mega Pincer when that is a threat to your own team. Like, I know you have Magnazone, but if that just catches Magnazone once, you don't really have, like, a Scarfed plus two return frustration switch in. But, yeah, L5 played really well, set it up, said Zygarde. Just kind of won. Like, once Altaria went down and once Thunderous went down, um, there was really nothing that could even break his sub or even threaten it offensively. L5 just kind of came in and molly whopped Arf's team. There's not really too much to say on this matchup. It's just he put himself in a position where Zygarde got up a sub, Gligar couldn't break it, and then just proceeded to win from there. There was nothing Arf could do after that point. I'm surprised Arf did bring the slow bro. Like, I'm surprised Arf did operate the slow bro because that is like one of the only things that could deal with Zygarde. But yeah, like actually looking at the matchup, why didn't he bring slow bro? I guess I'll. I guess I'll have to look into the matchup a bit more and figure out if there was a reason why he did bring Slowbro. But, uh, yeah. We'll move on to our number six and the Toronto Weezings. Now, I will uh, bring this to attention. Um, actually, is my number five? Yeah, my number five is the Chicago Caracostas, um, coached by Omega. And um, I will address the one thing. Um, the sheet apparently said... Azumarill, which was an FA that um, Omega made for week four. When um, uh, Omega uh, had Tabu Finney. And it, it it's kind of hard to judge how the match could have potentially gone if you prepped for Tabu Finney instead of Azumarill. But... Um, I will say, in Omega's favor, one, he won, like, 4-0. And two, um, Azumarill was not, um, a potential Azumarill was not the thing that would have won Omega the game. And Tapu Finney didn't even really come in very often, if at all, I don't think. It was Toxic Toxicroak. <laughs> Omega basically just won the game with Toxic Toxicroak. Like... Plus two acid down, like he just got Toxic Rogue in, and plus two acid downpour destroyed Necrozma. He he, Mega Deancey came in to revenge kill, and then got blown back with a bullet punch. I didn't even know Toxic Rogue got bullet punch. I'm sure Daniel didn't either. Um, Gengar, I, I think he went for bullet punch on Gengar, and then got curse bodied. If I remember correctly, what happened after that? <clears throat> um, also, Omega's guard shop, I think, lived on like 2% from the lead Empoleon's ice beam. And, uh, and yeah, that kind of 
set the tone for what's going to happen to Daniel. Just have a very unfortunate matchup. And, uh, yeah, it, it got to the point where just Weavile was the biggest threat to Omega's team. Uh, even though he did have the Tapu Fini, like, you look at his team, not very much switches into an ice move plus a coverage move. Like, Scizor can switch in, but it doesn't switch well to a knockoff. And Tapu Fini can switch in, but it doesn't switch in well to a poison jab. And it just kind of got mitigated because Daniel just kind of let it take a bullet punch. But then again, that could have been psychologically because he saw the Tapu Fini and just assumed that Weavile was going to not really be able to do anything in the match because of it, so he tried to find another way to win. I wonder how the game would have went if he knew he was prepping for a Tapu Fini, not an Azumarill, but in the end, um, this is what happened, and Omega pulled out a, pulled out a win. Good stuff. Uh, we'll move on to our number four. Which is Rise Pool and the Rhine Valley Guardians. Now, um, I would have I was thinking about giving Rise Pool a harsher drop. I really was. Like moving him down to like number six or number seven. But that's kind of unfair, because in the end it really came down to a prepping 50-50. Like like he said at the end of the battle, there was really no reason for Alex to run Max Speed Cobalion. In case, he, unless he was like literally expecting, um, Rise Pool to not bring Max Speed Cartana because Max Speed Cartana just came in and clicked Sacred Sword and Cobalion died. I I don't think Cobalion was unless Cobalion was Chopperberry, but like I didn't hear any comment on Alex for in that respect. So if um. If uh, if Rise Pool just ran Max Speed Cartana, like like I guess he didn't really have any reason to other than to just specifically outspeed a Max Speed Cobalion, and he expected Alex to know that so he wouldn't run Max Speed for for in his mind no reason. Um, I guess that's why you that's why there's the policy better safe than sorry. But when it really comes down to one small mistake in prep, when the rest of the game was really solid, and the rest of the game was played really well, I don't want to necessarily blame him, and I don't want to necessarily drop him too harshly for something that was kind of out of... that was kind of, like, something that he didn't really... Like, I'm not saying something that he didn't really expect, but something that in his mind legitimately made no sense. And I mean, if you look at the rest of... If you look at the rest of a Rise Pool's team, I don't think there was a reason to really run Max P. Cobalion. So yeah, I am actually kind of curious why he decided to run Max P. Cobalion, but it won Alex the game, so... I guess he can't complain. Number three is... Uh, the Blackbird Snowvers. Now, 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 we get into the, uh, we get into the time classic debate of what I said last week. Check your bonds. Now, I'm not going to, uh, blast Zhao too hardly because unlike somebody else who didn't check their bonds, um, or at least didn't tell me that they checked their bonds or did, like, immediately complain on the video or say anything like that. One person disliked. I'm looking for that one person who disliked. I'm sure... I, I actually don't care. You can love me and hate, or hate me. I, I, don't, I don't care. Uh, also, Jow, I'm, 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 too I'm too tired and I'm too sick to try to make funny acronyms for your name. Um, you get off this week. I'm just going to say Jow, which is as close to right as I know. But in, in your defense, in Jow's defense, he uh, he did actually check his mods. Like, an, an, like, a couple, like an, an hour to a couple hours before the match. And apparently it was fine. And then when he went into the match, he was missing Flamethrower. 
And um, number two is actually the FC Poplio, coached by David. Like I said, the uh, the matches this week were very close, and a lot of the ones between the top teams like could really come down to like either of them could have won. Like so, it, it was very hard to like shake up the teams this week. But uh, num. So um. I basically put David in front of uh, Zhao because, one, um, he beat Zhao in the regular season, so um, there's that. And two, I actually ran a calc after the match. Um, Magic said that he was max speed. Not max speed, uh, max speed death on his dew blade. I ran a calc. It, um, if, uh, unless Zhao was modest, which I don't think he was. He he probably was running back speed for Latios, or at least like enough speed down speed Latios. Um, um he um Dewblade actually lived um an energy ball into a uh an energy ball in an energy ball plus a spin death dropped into an expert belt flamethrower. Um, um, or at least it was a roll highly in Magic's favor, and then, um, Gyro Ball plus Shadow Sneak knocked out, um, Azelf anyway, and then, uh, once Azelf switched out, in the end game, um, Flamethrower would not have taken out, um, Dewblade for the range it was at anyway, so, I think it really would have, so, in terms of the Azel versus Dewblade matchup, I don't necessarily think him not having Flamethrower lost him the game. What could have potentially cost him the game were the two Toxic misses in the middle of the match, which might have forced both players to play differently now that they, now that you know certain Pokemon were on a timer. But you know, sometimes we don't get what we want. <laughs> Also, uh, uh, I'll give prep, I'll give, uh, props to Magic. He ran a Dawn fan to outspeed <coughs> Chow's Prey Marina set. And, um, that allowed him to do a KO Prey Marina. He did crit the Prey Marina, but I believe it was a two at KO anyway, and I think Chow was slower than. Except for Dewblade and the rest of, um... Ow, I stubbed my toe. The Magic's team, anyway. So... This was a very iffy matchup. And yes, um, Magic did end up getting... Did end up getting quite a bit of hacks. But I don't think it necessarily would have changed the outcome. It, it's, it's hard to really say what would have happened if the hacks did not happen. Which is... Why hacks is so hard to analyze? Cause like, you need to think if uh, you need to think if like it was a big deal or if it was no big deal or if like, or if like things would have changed. And sometimes you just don't know. You just do not know what would have happened if Joe had his flamethrower. I mean, hey, he could have gotten a crit or he could have gotten the high roll, but just because, or um, David could not have been running the set he thought he was running and. The, the calc I was running may have been off. Like, there are so many different factors, like, going into that that you just don't know. So, um, I, I don't want to punish Zhao too much because he still did play a very good game. And it, it's not like Zhao... And I don't think Zhao deserves to be dropped hard for what he did and for, like, missing a move. Just cause, like, I feel like, I feel like this match was played both so well on both sides that it didn't really, that it just, that it just kind of came down to this was a really good match. There were a couple hacksy moments, but, um, David picked up the win, Zhao lost, unfortunately, so I had to move David up and I moved Zhao down. Why does this say minus one? I think it's supposed to be like plus four. Because I think he was, like, number six last week. Yeah, plus four. Anyway. Uh, last but not least, 
the New England Patriots coached by Will. And why Will is number one is because even though he only won 1-0, I think his victory was one of, if not, um, outside of L5, which was literally a 6-0, I think his was one of the most dominating of the week. Just because, A, for Alligator had a chance to sweep, um, if, if, you know, Jarrett did get the crit, um, we don't know necessarily, because Jarrett did say I had some surprises in the back, but I don't know. I don't know. It was a plus one, plus one for Alligator. And it didn't seem like Jarrett really had anything to stop it. The only reason for Alligator ended up getting mitigated as a threat is because Will thought he was going to try to intimidate spam him by bringing in Incineroar and then switching out to save Intimidate for later, so he Dragon Danced on it. And they proceeded to get knocked out by a knockoff, which, by the way, I don't think would have killed without the crit anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you could have said Will would have just won if it wasn't for the crit. You never know. Um, but I think Will was just very in control of this game. Like, even though at the end he was down Pokemon, I think he just saw Jared's team and knew Milotic was going to win. Like, Jarrett didn't pack Toxic on any of his mods or any mod that could Toxic the Milotic. He didn't pack any form of Taunt. He didn't pack anything to really deal with Milotic, and Will took complete advantage of that. Scarf Diggersby poked so many holes in Jarrett's team. Um, Will, like what happened with his Whimsicott, he just played so risky with his Mega Gallade. And it ended up working out for him. It forced Jarrett to, uh, it forced Jarrett to burn his Z move that could have been used later on Milotic. It could, he could have, uh, he and Mega Gallade like in this matchup, like yeah, it was useful, but with uh, but with Mega Slow Bro, what the, f what did I just do? Oh, oh, hey God, hey God, okay. With Mega Sl with uh with Jared having a Mega Slowbro, like yeah, the Gallade had Leaf Blade, but I don't think that two it KO'd, especially out of the defense buffed. Um Incineroar was low, um Clefable was still alive, Tornadus outsped. Like, I think he just kind of used Gallade, like just played Gallade very recklessly, like, okay, I can just stay until I die and get off as much damage as I can. Like there was no reason at that time for him to save his Gallade, and he took advantage of that really, in a really big way, so good job. Uh, and then, you know, light screen Milotic. That was actually a very clever bring. Like, one, um, a lot of Jared's team, like, especially in this match, was special attacking, like the Gudra, like the, like the, like the Clef, like Tornadus, like the Slow Bro. His only physical attacker was Mammoth Swine, which again he had Milotic. Flame Orb, mixed defensive Milotic that just kind of ran through Jarrett's team. There was, uh, I, I, I've, I may have been harsh on Will in the past just because I feel like his wins were like the least decisive just because they were very low differential. But he's proved me wrong. Low differential wins, especially in this game, game's case, doesn't mean that they weren't good wins. And I think I've been overlooking that. Uh, I, I'm curious if Will's going to be able to keep this up. And I want him to keep this up. He's he pro he's proven himself to run very unorthodox sets. And I remember last, 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 last season when he beat me with a curse Mega Manetric. So, uh, we'll see. My tablet is very low on power, so, but uh, that's the power rankings. I'm going to plug in my tablet. Um, da d download the video. And then, uh, then I'm going to lay down for a bit. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.